I'm just going to remind you a wee bit about the company and where we came from, um, what it does, and uh, one of our new models is changing lives because that is the feedback we get. Um, it is that strong and we can um, prove that, that that line is true. Um, I'm going to go through a brief demonstration and remind you of some of the main features that should be being used at university level. Um, I've also got five top tips. I think James is going to give you my, my presentation right afterwards. It's just a wee reminder about some of the things I'll show you today. And then we'll have some time for questions as well. That's not going to work now. Yeah. yeah. So um, TechSop's been going for about 18 years. Um, we're a very well-established company. We're based up in Northern Ireland. Um, we are worldwide. We sell to China. We have offices in America. So it's a very well-established company. Um, we sell from primary school right up to corporate. We are now selling into the NHS, um, into fire services, everywhere. Um, corporate's actually our second biggest market. Um, I think now employers have, they have to be able to help their staff. They're not allowed to just push it to the side. So if anybody is giving this at uni, it is something that's going to be with them for the rest of their lives. It's not just a one-stop shop. So if they get it at secondary school, it's even better. It goes the whole way through. And um, what it does, um, it's text-to-speech is the main function. But over time, we've really built it into an all-school, all-uni solution. You'll see some of the features that I show you that you're probably aware of that anybody can um, benefit from them. Um, they are, some of them are spe specific to do with sequence and difficulties, reading, etc. But anybody can use these features and benefit from them. And as I said, it is used worldwide as well. Um, so what it says, I'm just going to tell you, um, just briefly, this is the difference it makes to people's lives. Um, we have a student and we have a programme area manager, both in universities, and they both have recognised how amazing it is and how much it's changed their lives. And as Alan said, he, his, it's a very long testimony, I've cut it down, but basically he used it for certain students and he noticed straight away that this should not be just specific students, it should be all university wide. And that's what he done. He then got a site licence and got to put in all the computers. But their full testimonials are on the website and you can read more of them whenever you have time. So I'm just going to do my wee demonstration now. Now most of you have seen this, but bear with me, you might pick up some tips that you've forgot about over time, because you do, you get used, you use the same features a lot. Okay, so um, this is the software here. What it is, it's a toolbar for those of you who are not aware of it, and it docks very discreetly onto the top of your screen. It is adaptable, you can have it, the images can be big or smaller, that writing saying exactly what each feature done can be changed, etc. as well. So I'm just, unfortunately I'm going to have to sit down while I'm doing this, but if you just follow me on the screen. So this is just a Word document, so anything in your computer becomes accessible. So anything in the internet, PDF or Word becomes accessible to the student. And I'm just going to show you that playing. Economics concludes that foreign trade brings major benefits, but the reasoning behind this conclusion sometimes appears counterintuitive or just wrong. Can everybody hear that okay? Let me turn on my computer. It's up as high as it can go. So as you can see, um, what it's doing there, it's doing the dual highlighting. Um, it's, that's proven to increase word recognition. I actually use it myself when I've um, done some coursework. If you read something, you read what you think you've written. But if you hear it back to yourself and you're actually tracking the word, it's unbelievable the mistakes you'll hear. It's absolutely fabulous and anybody of any level can use that as a proofreading tool. It's really, really brilliant. When they're reading something, um, they may come along a word that they're not sure of. All they need to do is click it very, very easily and hit my dictionary. And again, this sentence is accessible as well, so everything is accessible to them. The branch of social science that deals with the production and distribution and consumption of goods and services and their management. Okay, so we're making everything accessible and it's extremely easy to use. I'm talking to you and using it at the same time. We also have the screen masking. Um, again, it's just some people like to have this, the tint on their screen. It's very adaptable to the student as well. There's different colours. You can use it as a ruler. You can use your whole screen. You can use it as, as an underlining ruler. Again, no matter what I've opened on my screen, that can be used. So that's very useful for some students as well. So from here again, all I'm going to do is highlight economics. 
And instead of copying and pasting and moving over to the internet, all I need to do is hit my fact folder, or fact finder, sorry. And it will bring me straight to the internet. Okay. I'll just go into the first one it brings up there. I know Wikipedia is not necessarily the best website to be on, but it reads the web as well in exactly the same format. Economics is the social science that studies economic activity to gain an understanding of the... Oh, sorry, that was me. I was trying to turn up the volume there. For a topical guide to this subject, see outline of economics. Okay, so what I should have said as well, the dual highlight in yellow and blue there, um, everything is changeable to the student. Um, yellow and blue is default, and if they don't need a colour, don't tell them. Just let in the case they turn it off and then it's no use. Um, that's all adaptable. The voice, the speed, the volume, the colour, everything is changeable to the student. So from here, um, this is what's most relevant to universities is the research features. Um, it's collating the information, keeping it, coming back to it, and remembering where you got it from. So there's a couple of tools here I'm going to show you. So firstly, there's these highlighters on the top of your screen, and that's how we're going to collect the information for the first one. So you just find a wee bit of information you like and highlight it. Um, as you can see, you have different colours, so it can be for different topics. You can collect from the internet and Word at the same time. Okay. So that's all I've done is highlighted a wee bit of information and used my coloured highlighters. And all I'm going to do now is use the wee feature collect highlights and hit OK. So what it does there, it collects everything for me in a very well laid out format and everything's colour coded. Again, it's a Word document. I can see it. Sorry. Does that work in every browser? Internet Explorer? Yes, and it works in Chrome and, and Firefox. Yeah. yeah. Um, all it's, it's just collected it for me there and it's also referenced it. So I can save this document and come back to it in six months and I know exactly where I've got it from. So I can use this in an essay if I want to. Um, this was probably um, developed for more people with um, a sequencing difficulty and you know, bad memory skills. But as you can see, that is going to help everybody in your university. That's an absolutely amazing tool. Uh, can you, does it work for PDFs? No, you can't collect from a PDF, no. Yeah. We're, at the minute, you can, we can only read PDFs, but we're really trying to be more interactive with PDFs, and that'll probably be in version 12. Can you change the referencing style depending on the preferred style? Yeah, I'm sure you can. I'll double check, collect highlights. Yeah, you've Harvard, APA, or MLA. Just in terms of when, when it displays there, you know, the highlighting is still all, you know, so what the students going to have to do is go back in and kind of remove the colours, I suppose. Um, yeah. Is, is there a way of um, exporting it out and... No. I don't think so. Let me see. Um, that's collecting them all. No, the colour will stay there, but it's very easy to take the colour away. Um, as I said, I'm down here more as a refresher course. I work a lot with secondary schools, and I have a demonstration I go through day by day for secondary schools. But coming into the universities today, I had to revamp it a wee bit, and I sat with my colleagues. And I never used the fact folder until yesterday. That's God's honest truth. And I used it yesterday, and I think it's my favourite tool. <laughs> I just, it's just one of those things. It was always sitting in the background. And I always used the collect highlights, but I never used the fact folder. But I'll show you it working now. Again, it's just a tool to collect and reference information. This is your fact folder here. So it's on the study skills, study skills toolbar as well. So I want to collect a wee bit of information, and I just hit it. And it's asked you for a title. So... Test 200. And there is a category option there as well, as you can see. I already have a file called economics, and I'll put it into that file and hit OK. And hit OK. So all I've done is collect a wee bit of information and save it. The good thing about this is that is very easily accessible. Anytime I open my Read and Write toolbar, that information will be there. So if I want to review, review facts, I want to go to my economics. And there's all my economics there, okay? So at the minute, it's not very accessible. So I would like to export that to Word. And again, you, can, you have your difference there of referencing as well. And hit OK. Okay. The reason I like this is because it sets it out point by point rather than all together at the top. But it's every bit of information I've collected there. It's, told me, it's telling me where I got it from. And it's still referenced it at the bottom. 
for some reason, I don't know, everybody has a different way of learning and what they like, but when I actually played this a wee bit yesterday, I actually preferred this one. I'm not sure why. I just think it's neater. But you have the two very similar tools, but again, it'll appeal to different people depending on what they're doing. The good thing about this is it will always store in your read and write, so it'll always be there for you. The boxes on your leash. Uh huh. Yeah. Can you export well those boxes? Here is an item name, description, order date for you. Let me see. I didn't know if it gave me an option there. No, it didn't. I mean, as soon as I hit it, the, does the box, does the box distract a wee bit, or because it's something well, we? Students would go back and then delete all the boxes. Yeah. Okay, I'll feed that back. It's something that can probably be removed. So you say you use this quite a bit then, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so after they've done a wee bit of research and they've collected all the information, now they need to write their coursework. Okay, so there's quite a few tools here. Um, we have Speak As I Type and Prediction, and there's no reason why they couldn't be using everything at the same time. So the Speak As I Type is an option under your play option, <coughs> and you just start typing. My name is Laura. Okay, the really good thing about the Speak As I Type is you're typing away, you get to the end of an essay and you have to check it all. It can be very, very difficult to go back and check a very long essay. Um, but the good thing with this is if you're typing away and listening, you're going to hear a mistake instantly and it's going to stop you in your tracks. So hopefully that's when you get to fix the mistake. Prediction as well. I'll just show you that working. So as I said, you can have them both working at the same time. Okay, so just by me putting in a few letters here, it's given me some options here that it thinks I may say. So all I need to do is click on it. Thanks for joining. So you can write a sentence while speak as I type on as well. The good thing about this here is if the words come up and the student's unfamiliar with them, you can click the dictionary option from there. So they're not flicking back and forth. Okay, and then again, once it's just about getting in the habit of doing this, but once they've done a piece of work, it is about hearing it back and proofreading it. There is no, no better tool proofreading tool than hearing it back yourself. Um, there is a few um, features that I'm not really sure where they fit in to university life, but I'm going to show you them. I think they're more about maybe learning on the move and the fact that when you're in a university, you're all over the place. You might not see your lecture from one week to the next, etc. So we do have a speech maker. Um, you can tra transport anything into Word into, onto an MP3 file very easily. Um, the good thing about this is, you're, as a lecturer, you can put your notes onto your learning platform. Um, any revision notes that you've created, you can put them onto an MP3 file, listen, listen to them when you're coming in and out of college. So as you see, all I did was highlight a wee bit of information, hit next, next, and create. That's instantly now an MP3 file on my desktop. The default is to save onto the desktop. No, um, you could have chosen there where you saved it too, but it is my default just to go onto the desktop. Um, another feature here, let me just find it, the voice note. This is a great feature. Um, this is a way of giving verbal feedback. So if you've emailed your thesis through to your lecturer and he wants to give you a, a bit of feedback on it, he can put verbal notes within the document exactly where he wants them. So if my cursor's here and I hit my voice note, um, you need to make sure your reference is at the bottom. Stop recording, insert. That now becomes a file that's embedded into that Word document. So if your lecturer emails this to you at home, whether or not you have the software, you can listen to that file. I see it's all nodding, that's a good, <laughs> that's a great wee tool. So again, um, it's really about how you adapt the features with each student, um, how, they, how they learn normally. As you can see, there's quite a few features in there depending on how they learn, um, the MP3 and the voice note, etc. But I think that's me, that's me done with the demonstration. Does anybody have any questions? Could you demonstrate the, the word count? Yes. yes. And what, what's the word, how does it pick out the words? It's the most popular words. The most popular yeah. words. Is there any which way of editing those words? I'll have a check. Let me see. Just with 
that and, and we'll come up a lot as your most common word sometimes yeah. depending on if you use it. Right, okay. Word. Yeah, hold on a wee second, have a wee look at it. Let me find it. What is there somewhere? Can I come see it? Very, um, four Oh, it's there. Okay. It's not giving me many options there. Let me see. No, at the minute there's no way of getting rid of the and in there. As you can see, that all you need to do is highlight a wee bit of information. Highlight that whole page. And all you need to do is hit word cloud. And that's the words it's brought up for you. So it hasn't brought it, the or and up there. There's no doing any of those words. It's a good way to see if your um, essay is focused enough afterwards. The words that come up should be the topic, obviously. <laughs> so you don't have to convert the PDFs for us to make them accessible and read the PDFs straight off? Um, it'll read most of the PDFs straight off, but we do recommend you put it through our software once. We have, as James was saying earlier, our own OCR process. So you just need to scan it through our software once and then it will become accessible for you. I'll show you it reading a PDF, actually. Hold on. It doesn't work with PowerPoint at all, does it? We don't recommend it with PowerPoint, no. Yeah. Just for our students, that's the format they're getting everything in there at this stage. Right. Just convert it to PDF. It's yeah. not a big deal. Has there been any, any improvements to the platform? Um, no, <laughs> I'll not lie. Um, the good, the thing about it is the fact mapper is included, but there is better mind mappers out there. Yeah, we know what we can do best, and we focus on that. <laughs> Let me just see. And just for anybody who's not familiar, when you're in a PDF, you use a slightly different toolbar. It's this toolbar here on your right-hand side, and all you do is use click and speak rather than the play button up the top. To break away, concepts of the underlying ideas of accounting. They have usually been implicit and understood as a common culture of accounting rather than being made explicit. Okay, so apologies about the sound there, but it is reading it. Um, and you, you just need to put it through our process once. Well, but they were improved in version 11. What version are you on? Um, version 11. Yeah. Yeah. When you get the software, you do not automatically get all the voices because of the space they take up, but all of them are downloadable for free. So maybe they're only getting to it, like Daniel and Serena, etc. But if you have a wee look on our website, you can test the other voices and see what they're like. And just download them. Yeah, you just download them. Mm -hmm. The USB had about 10, on the USB model, there seems to be about 10 voices in there. Yeah, maybe because it's the USB, but if you download a single user onto your desktop, it'll only download a handful at the start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably did have to download Mora, yeah. I don't need Mora because I actually usually work in England. So um, that's why I'm glad to be the, the person that's not speaking the fastest today because I'm usually told to slow down. <laughs> but I can understand you today, so it's a change. <laughs> but no, I don't need Mora when I go to England. Any other questions? Maybe just uh, in terms of the, the difference between the, the USB version and the install version. Um, I know that some people find the, the install version and the USB version very 
it's still, or you know, sometimes when it's installed in the laptop, it it, it's still open. What would you take on that be? I don't know. They're exactly the same size of software and exactly the same piece of software. Yes, it's running off the external hard mm -hmm. Yeah, because I have the USB, I carry it back with me too in case my computer ever crashes and I've never had a problem with it. It might be the desk, the actual computer they're using. And then, yeah, maybe then that, that kind of falls on this day. Yeah. In terms of recommended uh, spec of, of a laptop or a device? Yes, it's all, as I said, I am more sales. We have a full technical team. Um, all the minimum requirements are on our internet, very easily accessible there. And you said you were going to cover five top tips. Is that what you covered? Sorry, my goodness. <laughs> I'm so distracted. Um, let me let me go through now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's when, when I, I'm so used to doing a secondary demonstration, and it's sometimes just stuck in my head. Um, can you all read that? Okay. Yeah. So as I was saying. We actually do refresher training in England in universities. A lot of the students get it through the DSA and they do not know how to use it. And it's, it's, it's frustrating because we know it works. And if they got it working, they would become less frustrated because they'd be able to work better. But when I've been in quite a few and they know how it takes to speak to them, that's it. That is literally what they're doing. So this is what it is. If you're doing either of these, we're just reminding you, if you're doing reading, again, it's student specific, but the dictionary and screen masking alone along with the text-to-speech, obviously, it's going to work. And the research, for me, because I totally did not use it, is the fact folder. Just remembering that it's there. Um, when you're writing, it is maybe, depending on their ability, com combining some of the features. So the speak as I type can be very easily forgotten about because it's an option. So just remembering that that option's there and the prediction as well. Some students might like one or the other, but there's nothing wrong with combining the two of them. Um, proofreading it, the text-to-speech alone is amazing, but you also have your homophone checker and your spell checker, which I actually didn't go into too much today. Um, and learning on the move is, I think, your MP3 and your voice note. So it's just reminding you about some of the features that aren't so obvious in the, in the software, that they are there, and to really take advantage of them. Just in the MP3, um, there is the same limit of time for the characters, to the limit of whatever it is. I think it's, it's really high, like 20,000 or okay. something, yeah. Sure. It's high enough anyway. If people walking out, it mustn't be doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> so any other questions? Maybe you should keep that up so you don't have to look at my dog every five seconds. <laughs> is there many, is, are you all using the software at the minute, yeah? And are you getting good results with it. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. That's what I mean. As it is it just change lives. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fabulous. Unfortunately I don't really see a lot of that. I go into the secondary schools and I think you see that more at university level, the struggles they have. Um, but in secondary school um, I deal more so with the teachers. But I do like to hear the feedback and it's very good. We've actually used the MP3 part and we've mapped it to mind maps, so they have little, little snippets of audio. In oh, right. Maps. Yeah. So it's, it's good for, for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Keep their study notes interactive. Yeah. And um, just, I think of a wee bit of time, do you, James? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, James was um, highlighted that I did not bring an iPad with me today or <laughs> want to speak about my apps. Um, we have the web apps. Um, the web apps, um, you buy this if you have a site license. And the web apps, um, there, is predict there is speech, dictionary, there's something else. But the web apps um, are quite good. So if you have a site license and someone then has their um, Android or iPad with them, there is some features they can use on the Android or um, iPad. Um, the iPad app is brilliant. I know, um, as James was saying, there is the basic features on it, but if they're out and about day to day, it will do, it'll do those basic features. It has the reading, the text-to-speech, prediction. It has the coloured screen. It has the colour of dual highlighting, um, picture dictionary. You know, as much as it, it is basic compared to this, if you know what I mean, but it isn't a basic app, if you know what I mean. It really is good. For, and it's only it's I read right. And it's only 20 euro. No, no, that's separate per iPad, and that's bought directly through the iTunes store. Oh, okay. I'll send out a link as well. 
But that's in that um, when you buy a handful of them, you get discount that James was saying. I'm not sure how many you have to buy, but it is in part of that discount group. So you can't buy it as well? Oh, you can buy it as well, as well but it, as part of the university, if you want to buy maybe 20, I think you get a discount. So you don't need control of those devices, do you? So you can let the students stand with your own Yeah, it's a, it's a login they oh, use, okay. yeah. But if you want more information on the web apps, I haven't put anything in my presentation, but if you want, um, myself or James can give you that information, that's very easily. Um, I'm trying to remember the dictionary, the text of speech. There's something else at all. <laughs> I can't remember. Sorry? What about if you buy something? Like, I don't know, like uh, are you talking about a university site yeah, license? Yeah. It's, do, it's to do with the amount of students. Okay. The amount of students in the university? Yeah. The amount of students using that? No, the amount of full time equivalent students. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a price, but I think James has the prices mm -hmm. if you want to ask him after. Okay. But no, if you're only on 10 or 9, it's not a huge jump. Okay. Yeah. You all happy enough then? Yeah. <laughs>